Hello. Now that we have done the basic groundwork of learning all the rules for naming hydrocarbons, it's now time to start naming them. Naming hydrocarbons with polyfunctional groups. That is more than one functional group. I'm excited about it. Let's start right away. Take a look at this compound. Do you see that this has got how many carbons? We've, the first rule is the longest chain rule. So what is the number of carbon atoms that we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven carbon atoms, therefore it should be a heptane. There are two functional groups. One is the CO and one is OH. CO is a ketone and OH is, a, is an alcohol. So look here, alcohols come below ketones. Therefore, the primary functional group would be a ketone. So this compound would be would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a heptanone. It is a heptan, heptan, two ohm, and the hydroxy. That is, if you have an alcohol and it's a prefix, it would be a hydroxy. The hydroxy is at which carbon? It is at the last carbon. So since it's a heptanone, the seventh carbon is the last carbon, so it would be seven hydroxy heptanone. There would be no space between these two. This continues. I just wrote it due to dearth of space here. So this compound would be seven hydroxy heptan two ohm. Come to the next compound now. Do you see it has unsaturation here? and it has a bromine atom here. So it's a halide and it's an ene. Now, if it's an ene and it's a halide, how would you name it? Ene comes in the end, while halide should come, uh, is always written as a prefix. So how would you write this one? This would be, this is propene. So how would you number it? This would be propene one, two, three. The bromo is at the third compound, so this would be written as 3 bromo prop. The ene is at the first carbon, so it is prop 1 ene. You could avoid the 1, so it is 3 bromo propene. The next compound here is CH2OH. CH2OH. So there are two alcohols, the two OHs here, and CH2 and CH2, which means there are only two carbons. So it is ethane. Ethane with, a, with two alls would be a diol. Remember, when there is a functional group which is present more than one times, we write the name of the uh, alkane and then we put the diol after it. So the di, whatever the functional group is. So this would be ethane. one two diol all right it would be ethane one two diol now take a look at this compound this is this has got two points of unsaturation two enes in it look at this one two three four therefore it is butane but since it is, it's not ane, it's got unsaturation, they are enes, so it is butane, remember, I told you when we write, when there are two functional groups, we write the full uh, alkane and then we write the di or tri or whatever the functional group is. But if there is unsaturation which is repeated, we, will not, we cannot write ane, so what do we write? It would be buta, the n would be left, this would be buta. The unsaturation is at locates would be 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, buta, 1, 3, diene. The compound would be named as buta, 1, 3, diene. Easy? Come to the next compound now. We see the longest chain is here. It has got an alcohol and it's got a methyl group. A methyl group is always a substituent and alcohol would be ended in all. 
Since all is the functional group, therefore this should get the lower locant. The functional group should always get the lowest locant. So, and if there are more functional groups, obviously the primary functional group gets the lower locant or the main functional group. So we start counting from this side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It is an octane. So, and 3 all, it's an octanol. So octane, octane, 3, all. And the methyl is at the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This would be 6 methyl octane 3 all. 6 methyl octane 3 all. And we now come to the next compound. Do you see this next compound has got two keto groups? C double bond O, C double bond O. Since it has two keto groups, how many are the total number of carbon atoms? And look here, if I count from this side, the locant would be 3. And if I count from this side, the locant would be 2. Obviously, this gives me lower sum of locants. Therefore, I start counting from this side. This would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It is hexane diene. But at which places? Second carbon and the fourth carbon. So, this would be hexane Two, four, diene. This would be hexane. Two, four, diene. Easy? Look at this one now. This has got a carboxylic acid. You remember? I told you in the previous video that a carboxylic acid is very, very, is on the top of the reactivity. Therefore, it is on the top. It's the most important. So it becomes the suffix. It's the primary uh, functional group. And the ketone is the secondary. Therefore, the keto, the ketone becomes oxo as the as the prefix. So, counting would always be from the primary functional group. So, counting starts from here: one, two, three, four, five, six. It is hexanoic acid. Basically, the compound is hexanoic acid, and the substitution will treat it as hexanoic noic acid. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is 5 oxo hex. There should be no gap between these two. So it will be 5 oxo hexanoic acid. Now we come to the last compound. Look at this. This has got double bonds and a triple bond. When you have double and triple bonds, then look here, we give more importance to double bonds and less importance to triple bonds. If we start counting from this side or that side, we get the same locants. Look at this compound. The locants would be 1 for this, 3 for this double bond and 5 for this double bond. So 1, 3, 5 are the locants if we count in this direction. Our counting will be done in this direction because in has to be given more importance than the ion. So if we count from this side, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It is hex, hexene, hexadiene. And then the ion. So it is hexa 1, 2, 3. Hexa 1, 3, diene the last e will be dropped because we have an ion also one two three three diene four five and five ion if we counted from this side also we would have got the same locants yes one three and five yeah but we are giving more importance to the in because it is higher here. So we count from the side where enes get the lower locants. So if you just keep following the rules, keep the rules in mind and the sequence in mind, it is easy to name these hydrocarbons. But the key is to practice as much as you can. Thank you for watching 
and if you like uh, the videos please like them subscribe to my channel and keep returning for more thank you